Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. <clears throat> Let's take a look at what's a pretty interesting run of the GFS tonight. First off, we're starting with right now, and we have this upper trough that's moving through here. It's actually a, a fairly strong trough aloft, but because of all the mess that's going on at the surface, there really isn't too much for it to work on other than snow showers. So that lifts out, and you can start to see the polar bottom of the polar vortex that's dropping from Hudson's Bay as we move into Friday, Friday night, and on Saturday. And the Arctic front at this point is just about through. And we're probably going to get some snow showers with that. Wouldn't be surprised to see the ground whitened up or maybe even uh, some spots getting a coating to an inch. But you can watch the vortex here as it drops south-southeast into New York State and then southeast across upstate New York in through central New England and then off the New England coast. So that really puts us in the core of that cold air. And the European temperature guidance continues to bring that minus 10 line pretty far south into Connecticut and across the Hudson Valley and into northern New Jersey with the zero line down somewhere uh, in South Jersey and through northern Maryland. It's been doing that for five days now, and I don't see any reason to stray with it. Uh, the GFS is a few degrees warmer, but it just uh, continues to kind of trend toward that European's cold, uh, uh, the, the cold that the European is showing. Now, the vortex pulls out and just moves along because there's no block, and you already can see the uh, trough here that's coming in the northern stream. And uh, that trough is uh, pretty important because <clears throat> it's going to determine what happens with this southern stream part of uh, this uh, complex here that's developing. And it moves it along and turns it negative here along the east coast, kind of phases it somewhat with the northern stream as it lifts up. And you have a pretty intense upper air storm sitting south of Long Island that goes up into New England. Now, how does this translate? at the surface. We're going to take a look at that uh, and you'll see what happens here over time. The GFS, I'm going to back it up. Now here's, here's that cold air that comes in for Saturday and Sunday. And then the high on the GFS is pretty far south. Although there's probably another a high center up in upstate New York. There's a center down here in North Carolina. And then it just kind of rapidly pulls out east-northeast uh, the rain snow line at this point is way to the south because there's so much Arctic air that's just going to take some time to dislodge it. And then low pressure comes out across the Gulf states, heads into South Carolina, and you pushes up just, all, just along the coast there and intensifies as it moves northeastward. Now, given what the GFS shows for the coast, it would probably be a period of snow that goes over to rain. And it looks like it will be uh, heavy snows inland. Um, you can see it here how the model has it. Uh, but this is one of those situations where you really have to look at the fine, fine details of what's happening. Now, one of the keys to this will be how the high comes out. Now, the high is going to go out. But what we, you'd want to see if you want snow is that that high center that has higher pressures for a little further north, at least into the Gulf of Maine. You're never going to get it into a... Uh, uh, an ideal position. So you just kind of have to hope that it, it, it builds back up uh, into uh, eastern New England, which is possible. Uh, I've seen that happen many times before. Kind of tries to do it there. Um, and then as the low moves out, uh, that would make cold air more important. And I think given the circumstances, it probably will be, assuming that this is the correct idea. Now, the European had a low coming, going straight up the Appalachians today. So that would bring warm air all the way up and pretty far inland. So we'll have to see what the new run does. Now, when we go to the Canadian model, it has, let's see, hopefully it's not going to be out far enough at this point, but we'll be able to see something anyway. Um, what you see that the Canadian model does here is that it takes that surface high and takes it out further north. It takes it out over Long Island and, and kind of tries to neck it back into New England a little bit. And here comes the low on the Canadian, and this is as far as we have it so far, but it already has snow here Monday night uh, into uh, southeastern New York, into Connecticut, and cold air is, you see how the, the ridge of the high is built back down across uh, Massachusetts and then goes down the Appalachian. So there's cold air that's going to be damming uh, down uh, the east coast, down into the mountain areas, and that's why you see freezing rain so far south into South Carolina and northeastern Georgia. 
But the, the question is what happens after this? And my guess is it's probably going to run a low fairly similar because here's where the weakness is uh, in the pressure, uh, how the pressures are set up along the eastern seaboard. But, you know, we're, we're pretty far along here. There could be errors here in both directions going west and east. So this is going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Uh, take a look at what it looks like um, at the upper levels because maybe that'll give us a better clue and hopefully and unfortunately I'm not sure if it's out far enough here for us to see actually it is so this might give us some clue and here's our vortex Canadian pushes that vortex a little further south than the GFS it's actually colder than the GFS and here you see the trough that develops uh, out to the west it's not quite uh, now it's going uh, negative. The southern part here, right there, starting to turn negative. But it doesn't really phase it, okay? And that's the important thing here, difference between the two models, whether these two uh, these two streams completely phase. It somewhat phases here, but it doesn't lift it up the same way. It just kind of moves it along. And that'll, that would favor a colder solution overall. And then after that, both models agree that we do get a warm-up. I don't think that's a big surprise. We pointed that out on the Joe Stradamus post today. That's probably going to happen toward the end of next week. But um, I just want to show you in terms of the longer range, because we've seen this uh, model volatility for a while now, and we've seen the atmospheric volatility that we've had um, for quite a while and that volatility is going to continue because as we switch off to the bigger view what happens is that beyond day 10 right back through here you notice the pacific ridge just builds right back up again so you have an establishment of some sort of polar flow back when starting on the week of the 22nd uh, you have that polar flow that comes right back and there's still um, a fair amount of ridging in fact the ridging gets pretty strong here in the in the pacific uh, in the northwest and on up into Alaska it looks like another significant warming event going on uh, up in the Arctic region and you have the polar vortex from Greenland uh, established back down south the, the the troughing that goes back through Hudson's Bay so you have a, a polar flow that comes uh, from the Arctic on downward uh, into uh, North America and into the uh, Great Lakes and Northeast as we get toward the end of the period so this is how the winter has been uh, the patterns have not been able to really lock in for long periods of time, and the enormous volatility has created um, the opportunities that we've gotten so far, including the result of the bleak blizzard. And I'm just going to tell you that, I mean, as we start to move through the rest of this month and eventually go into the beginning of March, I would not at all be surprised to see at some point uh, another uh, big event somewhere uh, in the eastern states, given that uh, this pattern volatility just continues. So. Get set for the Arctic air, some snow showers uh, oh, possible over the next couple of days, bitter cold this weekend, and then early next week, it looks like we're going to have some sort of precipitation event, um, be it uh, snow to ice to rain, or possibly it'll be all rain, or maybe we'll get a surprise, we'll see. Um, so keep it tuned right here, and uh, we will uh, keep you posted on all the goings-on uh, with the model runs tomorrow.